Hi everybody, Dr. Kat Fies here again with CNM Glass from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to continue with the video that we uh, just finished on blood pressure regulation with a focus on how the cardiovascular centers play a role in blood pressure regulation. So let's say that we are suffering from too low of a blood pressure in the body and how our sensory receptors we call baroreceptors respond to that. Well, these baroreceptors are located in the base of the aorta and the major arteries around the heart, such as the carotid arteries, the common carotid arteries. And when the blood pressure in the body is low, those baroreceptors are not going to be stretched. And so they're not going to send action potentials to the vasomotor center, I'll call it the VM center, the cardio acceleratory center, I'll call it the, well, I'll just call it like this, and then the cardio inhibitory center we need to discuss as well. So we need to look at these three centers. So when the blood pressure is low, our baroreceptors are not going to fire and therefore we're going to see no action potentials being sent to these various centers. And that relays information to them. For instance, our vasomotor center is going to respond by activating our sympathetic fibers to secrete norepinephrine. And of course, norepinephrine is going to cause vasoconstriction, which increases peripheral resistance. And we know that that is going to therefore bring our blood pressure back up. Remember, we started with too low of a blood pressure, and our goal is to bring it back up to return our blood pressure to homeostasis. So we have succeeded in that with the help of our baroreceptor reflex that is working through our vasomotor center. Now, let's work through these cardiac centers. What do you anticipate that cardioacceleratory center must do? Should it, remember, it communicates with sympathetic fibers. Should it activate those sympathetic fibers? And let's put a plus here um, for when the sympathetic fibers actually do secrete their norepinephrine or not. Well, remember that the norepinephrine is always going to uh, um, increase heart contractility and heart rate. So norepinephrine, when it's released, is going to, in addition to cause vasoconstriction via the uh, vasomotor center, it is also going to increase contractility and it's going to increase our heart rate. And remember, our blood pressure equals stroke volume times heart rate times peripheral resistance. And so for stroke volume, we're focusing on contractility. And then we have heart rate and for peripheral resistance, vasoconstriction and vasodilation. If you go back to the previous video, this will make sense. So if we increase heart rate or contractility, Clearly, if we look at the formula here, that is going to help us bring up our blood pressure. So our cardio acceleratory center is going to also get its sympathetic fibers going to secrete norepinephrine onto the heart this time to increase our blood pressure. Now, with regards to the cardio inhibitory center, what do we want it to do? Well, we know that it communicates with parasympathetic fibers only, right? And those parasympathetic fibers, when they are stimulated, 
they will secrete um, uh, acetylcholine. How did I do that earlier? I'm running out of space here. Well, are we going to want acetylcholine to be released? Because if that happens, how does that impact contractility and heart rate? It brings them down, correct? So we don't want these parasympathetic fibers to secrete acetylcholine. In other words, they're going to be inhibited, a minus there for inhibition of those parasympathetic fibers. So the cardioinhibitory center communicates with the parasympathetic fibers such that those parasympathetic fibers are not going to secrete that acetylcholine. And therefore, they cannot um, slow down contractility, slow down heart rate, and therefore are not going to keep that blood pressure low. Now, we can do this the same way for an increase in systemic blood pressure. So let's do that real quick. Let's grab another color, another fun color. So this time we have a higher blood pressure or a, ra a rising blood pressure in the body. And of course, our goal will be to bring that blood pressure back down to homeostatic levels. And our baroreceptors this time are going to say, are going, they are going to fire, I should say, because they are going to be stretched. And so this time we do see that action potentials will be fired to our three centers. And I'm going to abbreviate these centers now. I'll call this the cardio inhibitory center as CI, CA, and vasomotor. You can see what they're supposed to be like uh, on the other side of the class here. So again, what is our ultimate goal to bring down the blood pressure? You know that the vasomotor center, you know that the cardioacceleratory center, they both communicate with sympathetic fibers. Oops, sympathetic fibers that secrete norepinephrine. And without having to rewrite all this, the norepinephrine is going to affect contractility, heart rate, and vasoconstriction. Do we want to increase vasoconstriction? No, because that would cause for the blood pressure to rise due to the fact that we're increasing peripheral resistance. So we're going to want to inhibit the sympathetic fibers so that norepinephrine does not land onto the, va the blood vessels. And so therefore the vessels actually do not constrict as much or they vasodilate. So the opposite of vasoconstriction, as you know, is vasodilation, but really you need to think of it as less vasoconstriction. If the sympathetic fibers are activated via the cardioacceleratory center, then we're going to see that it's also a good idea at this point in time for epinephrine to not reach the heart so that we will bring down contractility and we bring down our heart rate because norepinephrine is not landing on the heart. And so all of these three things here are going to bring our blood pressure down. Again, come back to your formula. Contractility impacts stroke volume and then, of course, we have our heart rate right here. So finally, what about the cardioinhibitory center? Well, remember, it is going to communicate with parasympathetic fibers. And what do they secrete? They secrete acetylcholine. And acetylcholine acts inhibitory. In other words, it's going to act inhibitory on the heart. And so I wish I hadn't drawn my arrow so big. So really, we're going to see the same impact here as the inhibition of the sympathetic fibers. Let me repeat this. So the cardioinhibitory center will activate those parasympathetic fibers to release acetylcholine because acetylcholine will act inhibitory on the heart. So by secreting acetylcholine onto the heart, the heart is going to have a lower contractility level, a lower heart rate, and therefore we bring down our blood pressure. 
So we actually have stimulated our parasympathetic fibers because then we literally um, hyperpolarize the heart for it to, for instance, slow down its heart rate. So I'm hoping that this is now illustrating to you how we can control blood pressure via these three cardiovascular centers. When you take exam questions about this topic, it, it can get pretty tricky in your mind because if we go back over here, for instance, take a look, we have our low blood pressure and we're trying to increase our blood pressure ultimately. Notice that what we need to do at the level of the cardio inhibitory center is inhibition of those parasympathetic fibers. So we want to prevent the cardio inhibitory center from stimulating the parasympathetic fibers. So we're inhibiting this whole side of our reflex arc. So we're inhibiting the cardio inhibitory side of this diagram. Here, on the other hand, we are stimulating the cardio inhibitory uh, side of our flow chart. Hope this makes sense. It's a, kind, a little bit busy on, this, on the glass here, but I hope this helped you. Till next time.